quick message to guys on the autism spectrum. You've heard of fighting for things that are important to you, right? Your wife is fighting because you're important to her, but you're missing the second part. You just view it as fighting. To the NT wives out there, if you've tried to get through to your husband by appealing to his emotions and his empathy and talking about your feelings as you have found out you don't get anywhere because he doesn't speak emotionese. If you want to get through to him, you're going to have to think like he thinks rather than insisting that he feels like you feel. And how you're going to get through to him is appeal to his logic. So stop with the speaking emotionese, just making that term up, it doesn't exist. Instead, start speaking logic keys. Just a quick message to the NT spouses out there. Autism was here long before you were born, and autism is going to be here long after you're gone. It has nothing to do with you. There's no need to take it personally. It's a lot like the weather. There's going to be lightning, thunderstorms, sun, rain. It's a mixed bag. So message to NT spouses out there. What do you have in the way of self-care strategies in all different domains of life? spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, financially, even vocationally and educationally, what are some of your self-care strategies? Does changing your autistic spouse fall into the category of one of your self-care strategies? It shouldn't because that's a self-sabotage strategy, not a self-care strategy. Your autistic husband has self-care strategies. He will engage in his special interests for lengthy periods of time to de-escalate, to reduce his anxiety, to charge his battery, you need to find a self-care strategy that's as good as his. And changing him can't be one of your self-care strategies. That's self-sabotage. So again, all domains of life, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, financially, what can you do self-care-wise? Dear NTYs, Autism Spectrum Disorder is what it is. You can't change it. Trying to change the traits in an autistic person is like trying to change the weather. You don't stand a chance getting that accomplished. Please stop beating your head against a brick wall. He has to understand my feelings or I'm being abused. He has to say or do certain things, otherwise I'm not okay inside. He has to avoid saying or doing certain things, otherwise it hurts my feelings. Why would you want to give anybody that kind of power? Hey, a quick message to the NT wives out there. You want to speak your autistic husband's love language? It's not going to be words of affirmation or acts of service or gifts or quality time or physical touch. Just stop pointing out what he's doing wrong. That's his love language. He would view that as a very loving thing to do. Quick message to the NT spouses out there. Imagine sitting down, being forced to sit down at a poker table and play poker, and you have no freaking idea how to play poker. Okay, everybody else does. You're the only one that doesn't know, but you got to play the game. You got to try to figure it out fast. Uh, that's how your autistic spouse feels in social and emotional situations uh, that are over his head. Quick message to uh, NT spouses. Think of your autistic husband as a battery <clears throat> and uh, he will only be able to engage in social activities that are laden with emotional intricacies for so long before his battery is dead. And how does he recharge his battery? Uh, he goes and engages in his special interest. So. Do you not realize that your autistic spouse would be exhibiting those same autistic traits, even if you weren't around? So why would you want to make it about you? Okay. You say, well, he doesn't care about my feelings. No, he doesn't see your feelings. It's not years that are aging you. It's your reaction, or I could say your toxic overreaction to your spouse's behavior that's aging you. So you can relax into some acceptance about some things, or you can ruminate into resentment about most things but if you choose the latter, you have by default chosen rapid aging. Okay, so if your spouse does or says something that you download as being disrespectful, it hurts. We'll call it hurtful. But when you replay the event, now you're hurting you. Okay, so when you replay the original thing that happened once, 
but you've replayed it 15 times. It feels like it's happened 15 times. And then you blame your spouse for doing it to you for 15 times when it was only once. So yeah, we'll call the original event hurtful. Shouldn't have happened. It was wrong. But your replays, it's not the other person doing it to you then. Now you're doing it to yourself. Uh, this is going to sound sarcastic. It's not meant to be. I'm actually telling you the truth. How does an ASD spouse show his love for his NT wife? He does things for her. How does the NT wife show her love for her autistic husband? She tries to fix him because she cares about the relationship. So he can fix the dishwasher, and for example, and that's how he shows his love. And she shows her love by saying, yeah, okay, well, thanks for fixing the dishwasher. And I'm going to continue to try to fix you because they care about you. The problem is he can always fix the dishwasher. You can never fix him. So I get this comment from NT wives a lot. And they say, well, my husband doesn't recognize he has anxiety. He says he doesn't have anxiety. Well, if he has ASD level one, how is he going to know if he has anxiety? Because he's going to have some version of alexithymia, which means he's out of touch with his emotions. And if you've been anxious your entire life, how would you know whether you're anxious or not? It's like growing up in a dark room and you've lived in there for 40 years. And then somebody comes along and says, wow, your room is very dark. And you go... No, it's not dark. It's always been this way. This is familiar. This is how it's always been. Therefore, it must be normal. So he's not going to know whether he has anxiety or not. The more you talk about the past, the more you preserve the past. The more you bring up the past, the more you relive the past. The more you think about, focus on, and feel the emotional pain of the past, the more you bring the past into the present moment. It's a very destructive cycle. I'm letting you off the hook for being responsible for my feelings. And I'm letting you off the hook for being responsible for my self-esteem. And I'm letting you off the hook for being responsible for how I download your behavior. What's the number one cause of marital anxiety, stress, depression, uh, misery in a neurodiverse marriage? Unrealistic expectations. What does the autistic spouse want more than anything? To be given a word of appreciation from his NT spouse every once in a while to confirm that he's doing something right what does the NT spouse want more than anything? For her autistic spouse to just spend time with her, not necessarily do anything for her per se. Just a quick message to both parties in the neurodiverse relationship. When the two of you are having a disagreement and you're trying to explain your side of things and you're trying to help the other person to get your perspective, that is the dumbest thing you'll ever do. Because the more you explain, the more you try to reason with and get the other person to get it, the more the other person is going to download your delivery as just more defensiveness and more trying to prove that they're wrong. So the next time you're trying to get the other person to get it and they're not getting it, Instead of further explanations, find a washcloth and stick it in your mouth. Message to both the NT spouses and the ASD spouses. Um, it's not what your spouse is doing to you. It's your download of what your spouse is doing to you. And then your reaction based on your download. Quick message to the NT spouses out there. Why would you shame your autistic husband and guilt trip your autistic husband and then expect him not to explode in some version of a meltdown? That's like saying, I want to play with dynamite, but I don't want it to explode. No, if you're going to shame throw and guilt trip, you're going to be on the receiving end of some kind of meltdown or shutdown or an adult temper tantrum. And that's just going to come with the territory. And by the way, your shaming and guilting is not going to change behavior. It's going to increase that behavior.
you got to find another method. So if you are a neurotypical wife married to someone who is autistic, you are highly social and emotional, and your autistic spouse is not. And if you insist that he become social and emotional, unfortunately, you're going to push him away. And then his tendency will very likely be to be less social and even less emotionally connecting. So insisting in this case will definitely work against you. Have you discovered that the more things you complain about, the more things to complain about show up? Have you discovered that the more insecure you are, the more you require the other person to change their behavior so you'll be okay inside? Have you discovered that the more you look around and hunt down the things that are going wrong, more wrong things tend to show up? That's Tobias. You can make a point or you can keep the peace. But you can't do both, not at the same time. You might think, well, we should be able to make a point and keep the peace at the same time. Hasn't worked that way for the last 10 years. What makes you think it's going to work that way later this afternoon? You can do one or the other. You can't do both. I'm not suggesting which one to do. You decide what's best for you in the moment. But if you make a point, you're sacrificing the peace. And if you opt to keep the peace, you may very well be sacrificing an opportunity to make a point. You pick your choice. But if you decide to make a point, don't bitch about the fact that there's no peace. Doesn't work like that. Sorry. I run into this a lot where a person in the neurodiverse marriage says, I'm going to leave this miserable marriage because I want to leave my problems behind. And so they get into the next relationship and find that they didn't leave their problems behind. They just brought those problems into the next relationship. When you try to control or change your spouse, resentment and resistance will be soon to follow. Hey, a quick message to the spouses out there on the autism spectrum. I'm specifically referring to the husbands in this case. If we were to break things down to its most common element with respect to your NT wife's needs, she needs to feel safe. I mean, she has many needs, but that would be primary. In most cases, that would be at the top. So what can you do today to help your NTY feel safe?